John Lewis here of Lesser Archery Adventures, series testing, successful hunting. Today I'm going to be testing another budget broadhead, okay, by, by Cold Steel. I really like Cold Steel knives, and they started coming out with these uh, things they call cheap shots. Okay, they have a cheap shot two-blade broadhead, I've tested that. Then they came out with uh, one they call, I think it was the, the Bone Saw, and I tested that. That actually performed pretty well. Then I saw this one the other day on uh, Amazon, so I picked up a pack of them. You get like 40 of them for 28 bucks, okay, so they're really inexpensive. This is called the Buzzsaw. That is one weird, wicked looking broadhead right here. So I have no idea how it's gonna perform. I'm kind of guessing my testing isn't gonna to totally fit with the design that it has, but we'll see. I'm gonna be using my process that I do for 2023. For a description of that, you can read about it right below the video, or you can check out a video that I did just explaining the broadhead test process for 2023, and why I do it, what it means, uh, right here on my channel. Just look up 2023 broadhead test process. I'm gonna be using my Bowtech CP28, set at 72 pounds, and I'm using Bishop FOC King Arrows for most of the shooting, but I'll use the, uh, the Bishop Fad Eliminator for the really hard impact stuff. All right, let's zoom on in here and check out this buzz saw and go through some of the design features and specifications and then put it to the test. So here's a good look at this weird looking broadhead, all plastic, a solid plastic broadhead. It's got 12 different cutting edges. Got three here in the front with a, a one inch cutting diameter. And then it's got another nine back here that are all lined up. Okay, they're not staggered to make it like more cutting surface. They're all lined up. And those by my measurements have a 0.6 inch cutting diameter. So the total cut as it presses through a medium is 2.4 inches of cut. Okay, an inch and a half here and then 0.9 inches back there. So 2.4 inches cut, that's a lot of cut. Now, and if it doesn't go all the way through an animal, if it lodges in an animal, then that's when these extra blades are really coming into practice because they're all gonna be cutting. Otherwise, they're all just lined up and it's just gonna be like, like one, as if it was just one blade. But as it is, if it's twisting and turning, it's gonna be cutting in a lot of different directions and causing all kinds of different damage. They call this the grip and rip serration, and that's just what it looks like. It's gonna grip and rip. Okay, not the sharpest, but not dull. You know, you can you can poke on it, but it, it pokes back a little bit. And so, man, I have no idea how this thing is gonna work. I see that it's got a bit of a wobble to it, uh, yet for all plastic in one piece, it's not too bad. Um, don't think it's gonna excel in terms of durability with its extra long, length here, but man, they're super inexpensive, and I sure wouldn't want to have one sticking me in the gut. So really eager to put this head to the test and see how it performs. It took 1,050 grams of force to break the wire, but actually it never even cut the wire. It just like broke it off of one of the ends. Okay, it pulled it out of the, the little frame that it has. So I did this over and over and could never even get it to break the wire. So it's gonna get a one on a 10 point scale because it does have some sharpness to it. And as it penetrates, I know it's gonna be cutting tissue. So I'm just giving it a one because it's really not sharp at all. It penetrated six and three quarter inches. So really this test is not applicable because it didn't even cut the, the first wire and it didn't cut it again. It just forced it off of the frame. So I'm going to give it a one on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 42 layers. Here it is after the three shots through the MDF and on the good side, it didn't break. 
on the bad side, it, uh, it did get really worn down. You can see each of the cutting surfaces just got really worn down. There's almost no more little serrated nubs anymore. And here it is after two shots through the steel plate. And man, okay, on the good side, it didn't break again, which was kind of surprising to me. And you can see it made uh, holes there in the steel. Now they're pretty small holes because the edges just got really ground down to about nothing, but it still did hold together and it punched a little hole in the steel plate. Here's the head after all the durability tests. And hey, it did a lot better than I expected on the MDF. It held together on the steel plate. It held together. I mean, yeah, the blades got really rubbed down to almost nothing, but it did stay intact. And then the concrete, it actually split the concrete apart. I mean, I mean, there was already a crack kind of there, but it did look spectacular. Man, the arrow flew way over and hit my fence. And I don't know if you caught it. You had to go back and watch it if you didn't. But the knock flew off of the arrow and flew all the way over by my lawnmower. <laughs> it was really, that was definitely one of the more spectacular impacts on the concrete that I've ever seen. And hey man, who's surprised that it didn't hold together on the concrete? I was really afraid even just to shoot it, honestly. I was afraid it would come back at me, but it was kind of fun just to see what would happen nonetheless. So what'd you think of the buzzsaw? Man, I don't even know how to sum it all up, right? Okay, sharpness was just pathetic. I mean, it's just, it's not designed to be sharp. I mean, I could not get it to cut the, the copolymer wire. It just kept breaking off the side. So it's like, I mean, it's as dull, it's the dullest head I've ever tested. It's duller than a butter knife. It's just, it's just not sharp, but it's not designed to be that way. Um, you know, it's designed to cut as it goes really fast through stuff with the serrations. So then, you know, in terms of the flight, it actually, even with the wobble that a lot of them had, it flew really well. Okay, I was kind of surprised about the flight relatively well. Uh, the dirt, or, or the penetration, man, it penetrated about the same, because I did around the same time, as this uh, grizzly stick samurai. I couldn't believe it in, uh, in most of the medium. So, you know, kind of impressed me in, in terms of the penetration um, and the durability. I, I thought it was gonna break on the first shot through the MDF, but held together through that. Okay, you know, it has its weaknesses when it impacts steel and when it impacts concrete, it definitely has its weaknesses. Um, it's not something that I would use seriously for any kind of a, a big game hunt, though I sure wouldn't want to get a shot with it. And, you know, push comes to shove, you know, you stick it through a hog or a deer or something like that. I'm sure it can get the job done, but I, I would hope you you have a little higher standard for what you're going to uh, use on an, on an animal like that. But for small game, you know, for uh, having a bunch of them in the back of the truck, or, you know, walking through the woods and you're not afraid to break one or lose one because they're like 70 cents each or something like that. Man, they really, uh, they, they could have a niche like that. Or, you know, I think, I think this would be the go-to in a zombie apocalypse. Like right before that broke out, you just hit Amazon order about 400 of them and, and only cost you a few bucks. And then man, you could take down a lot, a lot of walkers with that. So that's just something to keep in mind. But I think it does have a place in the industry as a low price budget, 
you know, small, kind of bigger, small animal kind of thing for, for fun, um, but not, I wouldn't take it super seriously when it comes to some big game animal that I'm working hard to get a shot on and want to be as ethic, ethical as possible. But you check out the score sheet and see how it performed in the areas that matter to you the most and see if it might be a good fit for you and your hunting style. <laughs>